We welcome each and every one of you for another edition of our press club. Um, we set up the press club to provide for two main reasons. The first is to provide an opportunity for a diverse audience to listen to an interesting speaker, uh, both international and local, on a topic uh, that is of interest. The uh, second reason is also to create a sense of fellowship uh, among media professionals, business uh, executives, and a wide array of uh, uh, people from civil society. Um, about the topic, uh, initially uh, what we talked about was to bring about a topic, something related to the role of media in the Arab Spring. And then uh, Chairman Mr. Nadesan said, look, we need to look beyond that. Uh, we need to look beyond that to the ideas we are promoting. At SFPI, we are looking at media, ethics, and governance. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As the world watched Egyptians throng the Tari Square, calling for the overthrow of Hosni Mubarak's regime, they all turned their TVs to Al Jazeera. And Wada Khanfer was responsible, is the one responsible for transforming this pan-Arab satellite network into the most influential media voice in the Arab world. It also a revolutionary inspiration in its own right, giving voice to the long suppressed aspirations of a new generation of Arab citizens. That's a quote from the Foreign Policy magazine. Al Jazeera first made its name in its reporting of the Afghan and the Iraq wars. Wada Khanfa laid its reporting first in Afghanistan and then in Iraq, providing the Arab world and effectively the world at large. Journalism with clarity and journalism which did not craft itself into hidden agendas. It changed the media landscape. It changed the way global media started reporting. Wada was later appointed as the managing director of Al Jazeera channel in 2003 and in 2006 as the director general of the Al Jazeera network. During his eight year tenure at the helm, the network transformed from a single Arab satellite TV channel to including a media network including Al Jazeera Arabic, Al Jazeera English, Al Jazeera Documentary, and Al Jazeera Center for Studies. The Al Jazeera network is widely regarded as the only competitor to Western media that traditionally dominated the global media landscape. A truly remarkable feat for any leader to be proud of. So it is no surprise that he was named as one of the top 100 global thinkers and as well as one of the most creative people in business. Wada is presently a board member of the Global Editors Network, which empowers editors-in-chief and senior news executives from around the world looking for the preservation and editorial quality when working with publishers, media owners, and news suppliers. He is a member of the board of the International Crisis Group, as well as being a member of the World Economic Forum's Global Agenda Council on Geopolitical Risk. But none of what I've told you so far may be the most important thing to remember from this brief introduction. It would rather be something probably that goes beyond what Wada has achieved and helped achieve till now. Wada, to a great extent, has been living and continues to live the future. History bestows greatness to some people who foresaw aspects of the future and worked hard to make the future their uh, future reality in their own time. Fortunately for us, Wada is only 44. Over the course of this year, he has been investing his time and energy into a new project, the Al Shark Forum, which he thinks could well turn out to be the Davos of the Middle East. Based in Doha, the forum aims to bring together political groups, business people, social networks, youth groups to discuss the future. If one were to deeply analyze the vision and mission of this forum, it may become very clear that the future Wada intends to inspire and empower is a future worth looking forward to. Wada may have left Al Jazeera, but we are confident that his global journey has only just begun. You know, 
but maybe it is a good occasion for us to exchange thoughts and ideas. The fact that we are coming from uh, various backgrounds and cultures, uh, but definitely all of us belong to one profession. And I have found during the last maybe uh, decade or so when I was leading Al Jazeera that most of the issues related to journalism are the same. Like most of the issues related to politics are the same. And I started my career in the field. I was a, a correspondent in Africa. I've been relaxed there, enjoying myself, making magnificent feature stories about cultures, about the Zulu nation in South Africa and their tradition, about how magnificent Zanzibar and the history of it in the east part of the continent, about the Congo, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, you know, everything in Africa is magnificent and beautiful, of course, not always. Today is 11 September. Sahih? 11 September was a day that changed my life. So from this magnificent, quiet, scenic life that I was enjoying myself in Johannesburg and Cape Town, I found that the telephone is ringing and the editors in Doha, just after the collapse of the two towers, are phoning me and telling me, please go to India. What's happening? They said, we would like you after a while to go into Afghanistan. But meanwhile, go into India because we are going to cover what's going to happen in Afghanistan after the collapse of the Twin Towers. So in 24 hours, I found myself in Delhi. And in Delhi, I started covering a different culture, different environment, different political dynamics, waiting to find a way uh, in order to go into uh, into Afghanistan, and that took me about a month or so. And then through Pakistan, I entered Afghanistan, and I started reporting the uh, ramifications of 11 September in Afghanistan and the war that uh, started uh, against Taliban and Al-Qaeda. And I spent the next six months reporting the war in Afghanistan. Different dynamics, different fears, different hopes, different ambitions, different social and political background, different society. So that was also great eye-opening for me. Different risks, with no doubt. I mean, that was also interesting because for the first time I see myself in every moment exposed to dangers that were serious. I mean, I would say it was very serious. The war in Afghanistan was not really something uh, safe in particular. But it was amazing, you know, I found that with time, when you pick up your camera and you go around, and I used to film my, my documentaries and my, my reports and edit them. I love cameras. Uh, I found that once you pick up your camera and go around filming, you actually dissolve your personal, you know, fears and personal ambitions and personal, you know, existence into the camera itself and the lens of it. So you become one. And that actually was a feeling that was scary because sometimes you lose monitoring the surrounding around you and you, you don't, and many times I was about to be killed by people, but eventually it turned to be something, I started to be, in a way or another, surrendering to the fate, regardless of what fate is going to happen. But at this stage, the most important thing is to get the best shot, the best news, the best interaction with the people, and that was addiction. Uh, later on, uh, once you finish the story, you feel that the adrenaline in your blood needs more action in order to maintain and to sustain its level. So Afghanistan was really one of the most beautiful stories that I have ever... Not the beautiful, I cannot say beautiful. One of the most beautiful experiences for me, but the story is not beautiful in particular. It was painful, a lot of pain, a lot of death, a lot of destruction, a lot of problems that has happened in that, a lot of mistakes by the international society, especially the Americans. But anyway, it was a story that, in my opinion, made my career. That was a story when I found myself face to face with reality, and I do believe that war reporting is the utmost form of field journalism. Because in war reporting, you are in front of a naked truth, and you are there in order to test all kind of capabilities and emotions that you have developed through the last uh, years or decades of your age. Then I went to Iraq and I continued the reporting about Iraq 
before Saddam Hussein, for, uh, you know, collapsed and during the war and after the war and later on became the bureau chief of Al Jazeera network in Iraq, running an operation that most of it was underground because we were not allowed legally to operate. And we found ourselves developing a network of 100 journalists underground in every city and village in Iraq trying to cover a story that was not uh, easily covered. And uh, then we were facing a reality of more than 22 of our journalists arrested, tortured in Bo Greb jail, which you became later very much aware of through the, the stories of the torture. But we have experienced that actually on the ground before, long time before it was exposed to the public. And in Iraq, I found again that there are various emerging challenges to me personally as a reporter and me now as a bureau chief. At that time, I've started reducing my reporting for the sake of running the operation, which was becoming a very big operation with very high risk. In fact, uh, and maybe even higher risk, I have never really seen much worse than the case of Iraq. It was really serious uh, during that war. I think the Americans uh, decided to silence opposition views. And I think the Americans at that time proved to us that power has the same logic, regardless if it is democratic or authoritarian. However, the manifestation is different. So the, the authoritarian power is blunt, and the democratic one is subtle. So, but both of them spring from the same, re, you know, drink from the same spring. And I have found that the Americans were actually harsh against journalism, and they did not um, hesitate to use violence, literally. They demolished our bureau, they hit our bureau with missiles, and they destroyed it and uh, they killed some of our correspondents. They shot at them. They arrested many of us on the on, on checkpoints, and they declared Al Jazeera in a way or another, not officially, but this was the reality on the ground as you know, part of the insurgency, something called insurgency, which I did challenge that narrative always, actually. And I do believe that the Americans proved to us that the ideals that they have developed within their constitutional amendments and their magnificent you know, rhetoric within the country, which is the United States of America, was never embraced universally. Uh, we have seen the ugly face of the American presidents. We have seen the hypocrisy. We have seen very cruel you know, way of dealing with journalism. And the whole issue of transparency disappeared for the sake of, of actually pressurizing the story and molding it and for framing it into a certain direction. And during that period, I realized that the fight between, or the competition between the true essence of journalism and the, and the essence of politics is in fact the most important single challenge that journalism is going to face or facing. The competition between you as a witness of a reality who would like honestly to narrate it as it is and those in politics who are trying to frame your story and use it for their personal end. This is the actual conflict that I had to deal with after that until my departure from Al Jazeera. Why? Because I found that power, regardless of its origin, regardless of its roots, whatever, how, how, to what extent authoritarian that power is, has that kind of hunger towards monopolizing all kind of resources that could lead to power, to maximize power.